Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending wherever you live. Thank you so much for joining today's WPW opening. So my name is Chris Mee. I'm a professor at San Diego State University, and I'm the general chair of this year's conference. So dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to officially announce the opening of WPW 2021. Uh, we have 2,504 people sign up for this year's conference. And it's probably the largest ever in the wireless power area. So for those of you, if you cannot attend the live meeting, we'll have the conference recordings available for you to view later due to the time of the conference. Uh, so in today's opening, let me bring up my uh, presentation and let me share my screen. So in today's uh, conference, in this opening, we have um, nine distinguished speakers and welcome remarks. And now following that, we'll have a keynote and technical session. Our technical program chairs will also present the statistics of WPTC and of our conferences. As you all know, this year's conference, we have two conferences uh, in one. So WPTC and WOW. So these two conferences uh, working together to develop this uh, great week of an event for everybody. The WPW is sponsored by IEEE, MTT, and the Pelsa Society, and also the Attendant Propagation Society. So our original plan was to hold this conference in San Diego, but due to the global pandemic, we had to make a difficult decision to, off, to uh, offer this conference in a virtual format. However, due to the virtual format, format we now see a surge in restrictions. We have 2,500 people sign up for the conference. And we believe this year's watch conference will provide an excellent opportunity to give back to the research community and help, help attract attendees who otherwise are not able to travel to the conference because the contributions of many volunteers and the conference virtual format, and also thanks to the general support of our sponsors. We have nine industrial sponsors. So we're able to offer very low retrition price for assets, which is only $159 per person. And we also offer advanced registration for all general attendees. So we are very grateful for the general support of the Platinum, Gold, and Silver sponsors of the conference. And I'm also grateful for the WPW organizing committee. Uh, these members spent hours and hours of work over the past year to make this event a great uh, event. So WPW history goes back to 2013 and 2014 when the first WPDC and the first WOW uh, was organized uh, almost seven, eight years ago. In 2018, these two conferences come together to become a wireless call week. And this year, we're doing this virtual format. And next year, it's gonna happen in Bordeaux, France. And following that, these two conferences will join together to become one great conference for everybody to attend. And I hope all of you will, join, will enjoy today's conference and the events and uh, the technical sessions and the keynotes over the next three days. Thank you very much. Now it's my uh, also pleasure to tell you that we have uh, over the next three days, including today, we have nine keynote speakers, 85 papers, 2,504 attendees, nine industrial sponsors, three, three, of three days of events. And we have our attendees coming from 72 plus countries. As you can see, uh, we have uh, many hundreds of attendees from each country. I think many of these will not be able to attend in person right now, but they will be able to watch um, the recordings later. So it's now my pleasure to introduce Professor Jason Lee, University of Florida, to um, his, the general culture of this conference, and he's gonna take over from here. Thank you, Jason. 
to stop sharing. Hey, uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, I would also like to welcome you to this year's Wise Power Week, uh, our first fully virtual event in history, and set a record number of attendees. So let me share a screen here uh, from my screen. So um, I would like to take a few minutes to go through the virtual platform with you. This virtual platform called Huba, and it will help you navigate through the virtual platform. First is a trick that might help you. Uh, if you look at on top of the banner here, you see the times being displayed at the event time, which is the Pacific Daylight Saving Time uh, based on a conference or regional plan location in San Diego. Now we have uh, uh, two, two, more than 2,500 attendees participating from different time zones all over the world. So it is certainly a challenge for you to keep track of session start time uh, when you are from the different time zone. So you can uh, click the switch uh, to switch uh, from the uh, event time to your local time, uh, depending on where you are. And the agenda, um, let me move this one away. The agenda. The schedule, okay, sorry about that. Uh, let me switch the local time here. Okay, and then the agenda, the schedule will also be automatically changed. And this should help you to keep track of the, the session start time. Okay. So back to the homepage here. Uh, here we have an important announcements, brief description of the virtual conference format and schedule. So on day one, we had already the WPD school and workshop and day two, day three, uh, we're gonna have the nine keynote sessions with three on each day. And each keynote session will be followed by a technical session. So all keynote will be presented live and all technical paper presentation are uh, on demand with video already uploaded and available for you to view even before the session starts. So during the technical session, we will ask the uh, first ask each paper's presenter to summarize their paper in two minutes, one by one. And after all are presented, a live Q&A session will start. So the two, uh, two minute summary slides that uh, have been uploaded and you can view them either in this agenda, okay, uh, by clicking these uh, subsessions. For example, the TS1, the 10 subsession, by the way, uh, all the paper, the presentation called subsession on the Huba platform. Okay. And then you can see those uh, papers and they can view detail to look at their uh, information. Now, the, there's a shortcut here, the documents. The two minute summary styles, you can look at an agenda. You can also see all of them in one place here in the document on the, by clicking the document in the menu here. Okay. And here's another shortcut useful for you to look at the, all the video uh, uploaded by the speakers okay, in one place. Uh, the sponsor page is another uh, place that's useful. It's uh, essentially works like a virtual exhibition for you to see the sponsor's company's information and also chat with them, interact with them. Okay. So lastly, uh, don't forget to check out this uh, community board, which is uh, interesting. Here you can actually uh, create a virtual meetup or create a, a discussion topic to, uh, to connect with other attendees uh, in this uh, virtual event. Okay. And also the, uh, the announcement by organizer is going to be posted here. Okay. Um, so organizing such a um, virtual conference with unexpected, uh, the uh, 2,500 attendees, certainly not an easy task, it's a challenge. So without a dedicated volunteers in our community, this mission would not be possible. So Chris and I would like to thank the dedicated effort and contributions again. Okay. Uh, next, uh, our TPC chair is going to tell you more about the technical program. First is WPTC TPC chair, Professor JC Chow. JC, your turn. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lee. And uh, uh, my name is JC Chow. I'm from South Baptist University. And uh, TPC co-chair is Professor Amir Motazawi. Uh, he is a professor at University of Michigan at Ann Arbor. Uh, I'm uh, happy to present that in WPTC this year, we had 52 uh, technical presentation along with WPT school, uh, which has 12 lectures 
and uh, nine keynote speakers uh, are composed in this uh, uh, wireless power week. Next, please. And you probably already uh, uh, go through uh, Huva and our program book. Uh, these are the nine keynote speaker. Uh, they are distributed uh, in three days in specific time slots. And uh, what you can do in Huva is look for the red uh, label and that can identify the keynote speech and their times. And they will be conducted uh, online virtually. Next please. And yesterday we have a very successful WPT school and workshops. We have all the speakers uh, in the live panel. They answer and discuss uh, different topic. Their video, lecture video will stay online for one month. So if you miss it, uh, don't worry about it. You can still view, view the video and you can post questions uh, on Huva, uh, ask uh, for the lecture, any question, and they will answer online. Uh, next, please. Uh, this is the statistics of uh, this year's WPTC. Uh, we received 109 papers and uh, there are 52 papers uh, are uh, accepted. The acceptance rate is below 50%. Uh, we conducted um, a 350 review with uh, 49 reviewers. Each paper require three minimal reviews, but some of them has four, five, or six review, depending on if the reviewer agreed or not. And averagely, we have 3.4 review for, uh, for papers. Uh, we have a submission uh, from 408 uh, authors from 37 countries. And the number for accepted papers are uh, 233 authors. After the paper were accepted, uh, the TPC um, committee from uh, WPTC and WOW, uh, we have a review and we have some observation. And I will uh, recommend uh, this observation to the future author for the future conference. Uh, the first one is that we highly recommend that to include uh, experimental result or independent uh, validation of findings. Uh, it's very difficult to judge if uh, the uh, paper only has simulation result. So we highly recommend this. Second thing is that uh, please include the final result in the initial manuscript uh, submission. Uh, some of the paper has a sentence such as uh, more result will be presented in the final manuscript or presentation. Uh, this uh, reduced the review, reviewer's um, enthusiasm uh, about uh, the result because the reviewer cannot uh, look at the paper again. So it's very difficult for the reviewer to recommend accept. The third recommendation is that please read the manuscript uh, format rule carefully and follow them. Because if your paper is, uh, seems to, in, to be inconsistent or, in or not compliant uh, with other papers, and that give you a reviewer a bad feeling about your paper. So we highly recommend the author uh, follow these uh, observations. Uh, next, please. These are the distribution for WPTC uh, papers. Uh, the left one shows the paper submission from different countries, and the right one shows uh, the accepted paper from different countries. Next, please. And we would like to thank you, uh, thank you all, uh, the technical uh, program committee and reviewers, uh, 49 of you, uh, without your uh, time and effort, uh, is the conference uh, uh, is impossible uh, to have uh, high quality um, uh, papers published. And also uh, they uh, done uh, the review jobs in a very short time. So I really appreciate their efforts. Uh, next please. And I would like to introduce you uh, to Dr. Uh, uh, Afridi, uh, who is the uh, TPC uh, chair for WOW. Thank you, JC. Um, welcome everyone to this opening day of WPW. And uh, I would like to uh, thank you on behalf of myself as well as Al Alvestros, 
who is my co-chair um, for the wireless um, power part, which is the full name is the Workshop on Emerging Technologies Wireless Power. Uh, wow. And as Chris mentioned, this and WPTC will merge into a single conference um, starting um, soon, maybe uh, hopefully next year. Uh, for this year's program of WOW, we have 32 technical presentations. These are all recorded and available to you through the WHOVA website. So I look forward to your comments and, um, and, uh, and feedback on those uh, presentations. And I'm sure the authors will also look forward to that. In terms of the total submissions we received, we had 55 submissions from around the world from actually uh, 10 different countries. We uh, had an acceptance rate of 60%. And so 33, uh, 33 papers were accepted. One was withdrawn uh, as they had trouble uh, getting all the results due to the pandemic. Uh, there were 35 reviewers who helped us review these papers. And we averaged, um, um, actually, it was also our minimum. We had three reviews per paper. So we essentially had every paper reviewed by three uh, uh, independent reviewers. We had a total of 164 authors. And as you can see that uh, we accepted papers also from all 10 countries that had submitted papers for a total number of authors of 118. And you can see the division across countries on your right. Uh, moving on to sort of showing this more graphically, uh, we had the largest number of submissions, 25% coming from China. China was also number two in, in the terms of the accepted number of papers with 22% of the papers from China. Um, Japan, USA, Germany, Russia, UK, New Zealand, and the Netherlands were all major contributors to this conference. And we thank you all of you who've participated from across the world. Um, finally, I would like to thank all of our uh, technical program committee members and reviewers who spent um, substantial amount of their time and effort and very carefully selected the 33 papers of whom, uh, of, of which 32 will be presented uh, over the next few days. So thank you all um, for uh, being here and thanks to all the TPC and reviewers. Thank you. And I will pass this on to our next speaker uh, or I'll pass this back to uh, uh, Chris, who will introduce our next speaker. Yeah, Chris, back to you. Yes, uh, uh, good morning. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Greg Lyons, uh, MTG Society President, to give uh, his uh, welcome remarks. Greg. Thank you, Chris. Hi, I'm, I'm Greg Lyons. I am the president of the MTT Society. And on behalf of the MTT leadership, I'd like to welcome all of you to the 2021 Wireless Power Week. Next chart. And if you'd like to learn more about the MTT Society, please visit our website, mtt.org. Uh, just a few words about our scope. Really, there are uh, three pillars that support everything we do within MTT, our conferences, our publications, our membership. And uh, on on the left there are the RF fundamentals. So field theory is applied to, to guided wave structures, RF devices, circuits, components, modules, and an area that's seen a very significant amount of growth over the past five to 10 years are RF systems and applications across many, many different applications. Um, we span the spectrum from HF all the way up to terahertz. And although our tagline is megahertz to terahertz community, uh, we like megahertz because it, uh, it abbreviates to MTT, our applications actually go all the way down to kilohertz. And I'd like to highlight one of our technical committees, uh, TC25 on wireless power transfer and energy, energy conversion, uh, which very much overlaps with, with wireless power week. Next chart. And so of course, as everybody knows, the combination of WPTC, WOW, and the WPT school has really resulted in the world's largest wireless power event. Next trip. So congratulations to everyone. It's been, it's been great. Uh, everyone working together, PELS and MTT. Next chart. And so I'd like to thank all the Wireless Power Week 2021 organizers. Uh, this is a very good event uh, from the reviewers to, uh, 
to the TPC chairs and general chairs. It's, it's uh, a very nice event. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you uh, for your support. Uh, without that, this is not happening. Thank you again. So now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Liu Chen Chang. Uh, Dr. Liu Chen is a professor at University of New Brunswick. He's the president of PELS. Um, please deliver your keynote remark. Uh, sorry, <laughs> deliver your welcome remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, on behalf of the uh, Power Electronics uh, Society, I'd like to welcome all attendees from all over the world to uh, the, uh, the Wireless Power Week. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the uh, organizers, uh, for, for, yeah, the organizers of the uh, event for such an excellent uh, job done. And I'd like to uh, recall, uh, think about uh, the uh, contributions of uh, our two visionary leaders a few years ago, uh, both Kobu and Dangten got together and uh, conceptualized this uh, uh, wireless power week event. And based on their visionary actions, uh, we came about this uh, wonderful event. Next slide, please. In, in the Power Electronics uh, Society, we uh, expanded our technical committees. We hope to offer a welcoming home for everybody working in the technical field in the uh, areas of uh, power electronics, systems, and applications. Uh, this uh, new committee called the Wireless Power Transfer Committee System Committee was established uh, this year, led by Chris, Chris Mee, uh, co-chaired by uh, Grant and uh, Paul, and with the Secretary of uh, Faye, they are all working in the uh, wireless power area. Uh, our, our wireless power week will be the uh, primary event of this uh, new technical committee. Next slide, please. Of course, you're more than welcome to join uh, this committee or any other technical committees uh, free of charge. Uh, be it a, a PALS member or non-member. There are a lot of uh, activities uh, within the Power Electronics uh, Society. I'd like to uh, just introduce uh, one important initiative led by the uh, Power Electronics uh, Society, which is called Empower a Billion Lives. It's a global competition aiming at uh, providing the uh, solutions for uh, over 3 billion people in the board uh, with uh, poor access to electricity. The first round of competition with the budget of uh, uh, just about uh, 800K uh, happened uh, about uh, three years ago for two years. And uh, then second round of uh, uh, competition, global competition again, will start uh, this year and it will last uh, for two years with the final global competition uh, scheduled for next year. Hope you will be able to uh, uh, participate or uh, keep an eye on the uh, follow-up events of this uh, EBL. Thank you, enjoy your conference. Thank you, uh, Liu Chen. Uh, now it is my pleasure to introduce Sanjay Gupta, um, the president of Airfield Alliance, to give his uh, welcome remarks. Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor May. Uh, welcome to Wireless Power Week 2021. As we launched the conference, uh, what I really wanted to do was share my perspective on the wireless power industry and really talk about why I am so excited and why I really believe that the industry is poised to realize the vision of a world without charging cords. If we can go to the next slide. It's an exciting time to be in wireless power. First generation technologies have paved the way and new technologies are moving beyond you know, experimentation and limited use cases to becoming standardized and reaching broad adoption. Magnetic resonance and RF-based wireless power improve the user experience and open doors to applications that could not have been dreamed a few short years ago. These emerging technologies enabled rapid charging of multiple devices simultaneously and 
Importantly, freedom from precise positioning, something that consumers have been demanding for a while now. The possibilities for wireless power are endless, from industrial applications and consumer electronics to electrical vehicles, robotics, tools, drones, and we could go on and on. Wireless charging will transform the way humans interact with technology around us. However, we still have some tough challenges and problems that remain to be solved. And these require for all of us to work together as an industry so we can realize the dream of a world without wires. I strongly believe that the next few years will usher in a new era of wireless power innovation and market acceptance and deployment of the next generation wireless power technologies. I really hope that you will be a part of, you will join us and be a part of realizing the shared vision. I would now like to introduce Airfuel Alliance to those who are not familiar with our organization. Airfuel Alliance is a global coalition of innovative companies who are committed to a world where we can power up without plugging in. We work and achieve our goals collaboratively by developing standards for leading edge wireless power technologies and accelerating their adoption. If we can go to the next slide, please. Airfuel Alliance has a diverse membership representing the full spectrum of wireless power value chain. From OEMs and ODMs, to academics, to semiconductor companies, technology companies, component manufacturers, and testing labs. Our air fuel members are industry leaders and experts in wireless power. If we can go to the next one. And uh, you will have the opportunity to hear from some of them who are delivering keynotes and uh, you know, sponsors of the event here as well. And finally, after a long year of isolation, restrictions on travel and spending and throttled innovation due to the pandemic, it's really a great time for us to come together and reignite a shared vision for our industry. I encourage everybody to access the knowledge, the resources and the connections that Wireless Power Week has to offer. Thanks for attending the conference and I hope everybody really enjoys it. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Sanjay. Um, now, uh, let me introduce our visionary leaders um, to Hei Wu, Professor and uh, Industrial Chair at Polytechnic Montreal to uh, introduce the signing ceremony for the um, MOU between PELS and MTD societies. Hei Wu. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, well, first of all, I want to to congratulate you and Jen Shen and uh, the, the entire team for this, putting together this uh, fantastic event with the record number of attendees. I think the, that's really the, you know, uh, something which we want to achieve. Uh, the, of course, uh, maybe in a long run, but this is really the, uh, some, uh, a very important milestone in, 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 in our you know, the, uh, society and the community. So the IGB Wireless Power Week, of course, is a fruit of a joint effort and the close uh, cooperation between MTTS and the PALS through the co-location of the two, our two uh, technique conferences, namely WPTC and uh, the WUW. Um, the w, uh, uh, WPW started uh, three years ago in Montreal, Canada, for which I was a general chair, then went through the London, UK, in uh, 2019, uh, saw uh, South Korea in uh, 2020, and now uh, we are in uh, San Diego, US. Um, the, I'm really delighted and feel honored as the MTTS Inter-Society Committee Chair and a former MTTS President to organize this signing ceremony for the Sister Society uh, Memorandum of Understanding, um, MOU, between uh, MTTS and the POWs by the, uh, by our two presidents, Greg Lyons and uh, uh, Liu Chen Tam. Uh, this MOU is set to not only continue our joint uh, organization of this, uh, uh, co uh, the, the uh, completely merged the, uh, wire, uh, the, uh, the two conference becoming wireless power, uh, the truly okay, wireless power week, but also expand our close cooperation in other areas Definitely this would mark an important milestone today for the wireless power community worldwide. 
Uh, this, this is made possible thanks to steering committee members of MTTS and PAUS and the many others who has significant contribute to this joint event. I would, uh, I wouldn't mention all the names because so many of them have contributed to this. I want, uh, I'm particularly grateful to uh, Don Tang of the PAUS for his support of the important initiative uh, that has come, uh, uh, come uh, become a reality today. Now, uh, let me invite President Greg Lyons and President Liu Chen Chang to come forward for the signature of the uh, MOU. And uh, I hope that the, uh, this, everybody can witness your, your, this uh, sign ceremony. And uh, <laughs> OK, show you the uh, your boss. OK, so I'm, not, I'm not sure. This is, um, yeah. this is yeah. the. That's great. This is the that's, front that's, of the MOU. That's that's great. That's uh, <laughs> that's exactly what I want to see. Okay. It's, I have to be careful, or the video will it'll disappear. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And this. We'll see. <laughs> great. So that's done. So yeah. now we have more than two thousand five hundred people have witnessed this uh, the the signature of this uh, important uh, MOU set to the uh, the between the two societies. So I think that's our kick off. The uh, future, the uh, you know, the uh, actually the enhanced co uh, the cooperation and the collaborations between our two societies. So thank you very much. And now let's get back to uh, Chris. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kay. Uh, thank you so much. Sorry, I'm uh, yeah. Uh, great. Uh, thank you all for. Sorry, I think yes. Thank you very much um, for everybody, especially everybody keeping the time um, that you're allocated. And this is a really great uh, opening. So dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, the, op the official opening ceremony now is completed. We're gonna move on to our keynote speech, but let me give you a few um, logistic guidelines. Um, if you have any questions for panelists and the attendees, you may ask the questions through the Q&A panel. Uh, for panelists, you can also through the chat window. And we will uh, start the keynote and then we're gonna answer the questions after the keynote speech. We will maintain this in 30 minutes. After that, we're gonna transition to our technical session. For people uh, who you want, missed any part of this uh, conference, you may be able to watch the YouTube live stream and a recorded video at a later time. So now it is my distinguished pleasure to introduce our keynote, our very first keynote speaker, Cecil Johnston. So Cecil Johnston is a CEO and an executive VP of Energies. So he's responsible for accelerating open innovation in new and emerging wireless power technology systems and markets. He's a seasoned technologist, entrepreneur, an investor. He, uh, Prior joining Energist, he has a broad experience with a large enterprise and startups. So he was previously a vice president of engineering for wireless con connectivity and mobile semiconductor. And before that time, he had 20 years of experience working across hardware, software, and services, uh, especially in the first generation of CISO and MIMO wireless products. He's a senior member of IQB and has over 40 papers and patents. So CISA will, again, as I said, will answer your questions after speech. Uh, please post your questions through the Q&A &A function. So without further ado, I would like to call CISA to deliver his speech. CISA, please. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Uh, before I start, I wanna thank all the distinguished members of the conference for uh, having such a great uh, event going on. It's, it's all about wireless power. And it's, I'm looking forward to present uh, our ideas from the point of view of energies and myself, and feel free to ask questions at the end of the presentation. Having said that, let me now uh, set up the presentation. One second, please. Uh, Caesar, we don't see or hear from you.
Are you having difficulties uh, sharing your screen? I see, sir. Where is? I think they should have. Uh, can, they can see me. Yeah. So uh, we're having some problems here with the slides. Uh, if you give me another two seconds, I'll try to set it up. I apologize for that. Uh, see. Yeah, for the attendees, uh, our keynote is setting up the presentation, so please be patient. Can you see it? Yeah, now we see. Oh, great. Sorry, I apologize about that. I know Zoom is great, but sometimes it doesn't work well. Great. All set? Again, can you guys see it? Yes. Great. So uh, once more, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be here and be part of this great conference. Uh, my name is Cesar Johnston. As Chris mentioned, I've done a lot of wireless communications in the past. And many years ago, as I joined uh, Energis, I saw this as a great opportunity to start some new field of technology, which as engineers excite us and, and provide a lot of energy to move forward and apply previous knowledge. Uh, so today I'll be presenting uh, and introducing to you uh, to the concept of RF wireless power transmission. So this weekend, I was at home thinking of what I would say today and, and wondering how I, sh I should introduce uh, th this concept. And as some of the panel uh, people that have presented so far have said, uh, it's all about wires today, right? And, and we have removed some of the wire wires. We have not removed all of the wires. And if we and we really hate those wires, we really hate those bundles of chargers, and we always get confused with those charges. We really hate connecting our cars with those big cables that everybody touches, and sometimes they're not very clean. And certainly a lot of you probably don't enjoy plugging in your phones because they discharge all the time, and it's kind of painful. So what do we do today as a team? What do we do today as a community is we want to remove those wires. So no more wires. Now, we've discussed the fact that we have inductive technologies and there's a first generation of wireless uh, that's being deployed. And as a significant uh, demonstrator, we have the phone and the phone is using inductive technologies. We have the cars, electric cars that are being charged. And what's interesting about this trend is that all of these technologies, whether are shown or not on this, on this slide, they're all increasing power. We are all working on increasing the power from watts to kilowatts. But the challenge here is to basically increase power while being near a field. So today, our first generation technologies focus on power and near field conditions of, of transmission. So the next generation, which is what we want to really push for and we're working on, especially here at Energis, is to now push and increase the distance. We want to have a technology that can support near field, a technology that can do far field, but most of all, a technology that allows to send power using radio frequency uh, signals. Now, you might go and say, well, that's not the only technology that can do this. It's not the only technology that can get distance. That's true, but it's a technology that we're working on here at Energis. And while there may be others, What's going to happen in the future, and what I really look forward from everyone at this conference is to realize that in order to deploy wireless charge charging, we're going to have to look at this evolution of the technologies. We're going to have to pick the right technologies in the right sectors and markets, and some of them might be inductive, some of them might be RF. But what's most important is that in the future, we will see a coexistence of these technologies. 
whether at home, whether in your car, whether at your office. Now, as far as RF wireless transmission, there are multiple markets, there are multiple applications. And for the sake of it, I wanted to simplify it today as basically two markets. A market where, where, let's call it for now, a consumer market, where you're looking at transmission at one meter or so with, within a certain uh, covered area, let's, let's say in front of your laptop or at home on your night table. And there are plenty of opportunities as far as distance or call it far field in, in the cases of industrial applications where you might have sensors and you wanna be tracking devices in, inside an industrial factory or in retail as well as medical and others where you might wanna be able to charge those electric displays or you want, might be able to actually have labels to track all those bottles that you see on the picture. So, so as far as the markets, as far as the application of this technology, there is more than plenty. Okay, and how does it work? And that's the important part here. And I want to introduce that. It's very simple. It's very similar to connectivity or, or communication systems where you have a transmitter. The transmitter in our case sends power. That power is received by passive receivers. Those receivers recover the, the RF power from the air and provide that, pow that power to a load that could be uh, charge capacitors or batteries. Now, why is RF wireless important and why do I really encourage all of you in this conference to be part of it is because it's early, it's just started, and I'll tell you more about that, but it allows you to have power at a distance. It allows you to have multiple receivers at a, either simultaneously or using uh, broadcast systems or uh, using beamforming. You can have one at a time and use a round robin system by which you can actually focus more power if needed at a given receiver. It allows you to also extend power coverage in a very similar manner that today we extend Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You can take multiple transmitters, deploy those transmitters at distances, let's say 15 meters or more, and then you can actually cover the whole factory. You can cover the whole uh, supermarkets and so on. And finally, mobility. It's all about mobility. Cut those wires, get rid of those wires. And you guys are here today, 2,500 people that can help make this happen. And I'm looking forward for that. So now you might say to me, well, Caesar, I mean, you're, you guys have been working on this for a long time. People have been talking about this for a long time. Yes, we have, and we have actually invested a lot on this technology, and I'll tell you more about that. But I wanted to tell you that we're actually building momentum. RF wireless power is here to stay. RF wireless power is happening, and it's happening through a number of public press announcements. We have the situation about three and a half years ago where here at Energis, we opened up the FCC and we were able to actually get the distance from five millimeters, again, five millimeters, which is nothing, to, to a one meter. So today it is possible in the US to send power up to one meter. Recently, about four weeks ago, in, in partnership with uh, uh, some company uh, called EPS, which is a partner of ours, we have now demonstrated at a distance wireless charging applications greater than one meter. And at uh, around the same time, we finally have our first European regulatory approval by which it is today, once and for all, possible to send power. And this is power greater than one watt, not, not the same power that you get in Wi-Fi, but greater than one watt conducted power up to five and a half watts at distances beyond one meter, at distances at 15 meters and beyond. So there's no limitation on that. And just to show the importance of this technology, there are massive companies looking into this. You have Motorola, you have Huawei, you have Xiaomi, and you have uh, pretty much a lot of momentum in the press where you have he he headings like wireless power market hits up. And as far as those Huawei, Motorola, and Xiaomi efforts, they're all great. They're great uh, proofs of concepts. They're great prototypes. And it shows that this technology, by the way, does work. There's no restriction on what the technology can do, but what's really important is that in order to be able to make it commercial, those technologies need to meet certain parameters for regulatory, for standards, and safety. And I'll talk a bit more on that. And we recently announced at Energis our Power Hub, what a Power Hub, which is a system that's been certified, is up to five and a half watt power conducted, and 
and it's there uh, available for people that want to start uh, working and, and, and deploying RF wireless power. Now, having introduced uh, the concept of RF wireless power, what's important for us is to talk about the innovation. What are the challenges? Where are we with respect to wireless technologies? And reality is the fact that for many, many, many years, uh, wireless power has been really abandoned. And it's been abandoned, in my opinion, from, from, from a necessity point of view. And that necessity really started when people needed batteries in their solutions. The moment we needed to be mobile, then wireless is a need. So as far as innovation, there's 2,500 people. Look at CMOS technology, look at GAN technology, look at gas technologies. All those technologies have already been developed. They're very mature. They actually have very, very nice tools. And what's the challenge here is to design novel wireless power dedicated, again, dedicated devices. They're not the same as communication devices. They are different. They have different restrictions. They have different technical and safety requirements. And while they use extreme low power design techniques that have already been developed, they need to have their own solution because we want, we want cost. And I, I'm showing here on this slide a, a transmitter that we've developed that has very dedicated CMOS devices. Similarly, we looked at passive receivers on the right-hand side, and, and those are two examples of the multiple technologies that we have here at, at Energis. And it's here, it's happening, this is second generation devices, and it would, I would love to see all of you next year talking about RF wireless, talking about the next generation beyond what's possible today. Uh, another important opportunity is it's the concept of form factor. And there are so many devices beyond the phone and the cars that need to have power, that need to happen, that need to basically charge seamlessly over the air. And those devices are actually so many of them that and are so weird in their form factors that RF wireless technologies are the, uh, the only technologies that allow you to actually design different shapes by actually modeling different types of antennas, whether they need high coupling or high gain performance, and we can fit those on our products. So it is possible now that the antenna engineers listening to me today will have plenty of fun and plenty of work to do in the next number of years. Now, a lot of you will come to me and say, yeah, you're talking all this, Caesar, but there are no regulatory efforts. Uh, things are not happening. That's not true. Regulatory efforts are happening. The ITU has now put together a plan for a, a, a harmonizing the frequencies. And there are at least three frequencies that are important today, 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and five gigahertz. So that's happening. And we'll see something towards the end of this year. Similarly, in the US, there's the FCC. And, as in, and what's interesting about the FCC and how we have been able to actually put toge together a qualification of our technology is by looking at the limitations. In the, in the US, there is no power limitations as far as transmission. There are distance limitations. Power limitations means localized power. And what we've done is we actually were able to use part 18, which had no distance at the time, about three years ago, and show that one meter and five and a half happens and it's, it's been approved. So it's there today. And by the way, there's a notice of proposed rulemaking going on at the FCC, which will formalize wireless power transmission, RF wireless power transmission. It is happening. It will, it will occur and we will have hopefully a description of formal description by the FCC in the next year to year and a half. In Europe, the situation is a bit different. There are power limitations. There are no distance limitations. Power limitations because it allows people to go all the way up to uh, four watts beyond the one watt system, but no distance limitations, basically limitless. It would be nice if we could merge the US and uh, Europe and say there are no power limitations, there are no distance limitations. Remember what I said to you before? Push the power, push the distance. Finally, I really need to talk about Japan. I see Japan as a society that's very, very advanced technologically, and they're there today, and they actually very organized. They have the Broadband Wireless Forum. It's been going on for a number of years, and, and they are actually looking at one watt systems as far as, and, and 10 watt systems, 40 watt uh, conducted systems, uh, and apparent, and they have the support of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications. Uh, as far as safety and standards, that's another area where people will go and say, well, this is not safe. This is not safe. RF wireless is going to cause problems. That's not true. I mean, it is. If, if the levels of power 
that are required are huge and the levels of power are not properly managed, then that is correct. But it is possible to manage RF. And we have proven that. It is possible to manage RF by looking at the emissions and, and making sure that it can coexist with other te technologies, specifically communication technologies. It is possible to actually look at uh, the specific absorption rate, the SAR, which is the level of energy that uh, a human can take at a given time. And it is possible to design those systems under those conditions. And definitely, uh, it is possible also to measure the E-field to demonstrate coverage levels. Finally, I want to say here, as far as the standards, we, you heard uh, the Air Fuel Alliance is there. It is an industry alliance. I'd like to see more people joining and helping here. And as far as other standardization bodies, Etsy and, C and CISPR is there. So jump on the wagon. I encourage you guys to make it happen. Finally, as far as uh, the markets, I'm just going to say, there are multiple markets. There are so many of them, and I'm showing you some of a few of them here. And there are over 5 billion devices that we can power today just on the markets that are on the screen. Okay, now give me a second here. I'm going to set up for uh, the video uh, demonstration. I'm going to. So since it seems we lost you, are you? Sorry, guys, uh, everybody. I think we lost the CISA somehow. This is a part of a virtual conference where you don't have a person on the stage where you can lose connection with the technical difficulties. We seem that it seemed that we lost him. Yeah, hopefully he can rejoin very soon. Wow. So I just promoted Daniel Yu uh, to uh, panelist. So Daniel, we lost Caesar. Hopefully, do you have phone to call him to rejoin? Okay, so far our chair is working on to reconnect with the uh, keynote speaker. I just want to remind attendees that um, for this uh, keynote session and then the next uh, technical session and all the following sessions, you can type your question in uh, with a Zoom Q&A. Um, and then alternatively, uh, even before the session starts, you can also enter your question, type in your question on the Huba platform as a session Q&A. Uh, on the left menu that you can utilize. I already see that several questions being asked over there.
And then while we are waiting and uh, trying to gather the speakers for our first technical session, I have all um, but one, the first speaker, um, I cannot find you. Uh, it's just join. Real, huh? Just join? Yeah. Sister, you have to oh, Sister, okay, oh, great. I am back, I apologize. We're having some technical difficulties here. Uh, so I, I got this, uh, let's do this. Uh, I will post the video uh, on the server so people can look at it. Okay. Uh, why don't we start questions and answers? Uh, yes, let's, uh, let's do that. Sister, thank you very much. And I apologize for the technical difficulties we had just a little earlier. This is one of the things that uh, <laughs> you can never expect to happen, but it happens. Um, <laughs> And I, so thank you very much for a great talk. I think you covered a lot of stuff. I think um, for many of the attendees today, we really wanted to learn um, not only just for the power, uh, what is power technology to sell, but also in the sense that what's, what is your vision? Like uh, in your role at Energies, you come across different technologies and different applications. How do you, how do you identify them? You know, how, how do you focus both on technology and then also on the uh, commercial ability or the profitability for the company moving forward in a, in a couple of years. Yes. So uh, what's interesting is there are so many different markets and there's so much interest in this technology that we actually observe people that want extremely high power and extremely low power, right? And what we need to do is we need to balance the requirements and we balance those requirements given within the parameters of, of safety and within the parameters of being able to certify the technology. So, so what I see is I see an evolution. I see an evolution of this technology from low power devices all the way down to wearable devices, down into much higher power devices. So today, when we talk to our customers, we look at customers that have hearing aids, that have form factor issues, as I mentioned before, that's a challenge, that, that, is, that need cost-effective solutions that are CMOS-based. And we're also recently and sorry we missed that video, but we're looking at uh, active harvesting by which we send power over the air. And that power over the air is actually harvested by receivers. And those receivers are actually uh, using a dedicated uh, transmitter uh, system that sends power. And I, I do see a lot of tremendous growth right there in the industrial and, and the, the retail areas by which you will have sensor-based solutions, but it's getting smarter. And you're going to see a lot of artificial intelligence happening. So I believe that that's going to be the beginning and there's no limit here. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, what what uh, I think uh, from the perspective, I heard a lot of uh, uh, news about uh, energies. For example, you guys announced some collaborations with EPA, Thank you, and other, others. Um, what, what is what's the rule? Like, uh, between these different you know, companies with energy. So how do you yes. guys work together to advance wireless? Yes, we, we focus on the development of semiconductor devices that are dedicated to the use of wireless power transmission. Now, in that context, there are a number of other technologies that we need to partner with, okay? In order to make this happen, you need to have CPU technologies, right? You need to have connectivity technologies. So we have a partnership with Dialog, who is, who is a great partner for us. Do you need to have different levels of, of power reception? So we have a partnership with EPs. So what we do is what, whatever complements the solution, the system solution is where we look at partnerships and we add that to our solution in such a way that we can grow with others. So if there are any partners out there that think their technology uh, can help us, sure, we're open and we would like to uh, hear from them. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Uh, I, I think we're we'll be uh, just about two minutes over time, but I really want to get into some of the questions that our audience wanted to ask you. So one of them was that, in your opinion, what is the best WPT technology for drone charging? For drone charging? That's a very good question. Uh, when it comes to, to best technology, it, it, it depends on who's looking at it, right? So one thing could be best for me, one thing could be best for somebody else. Certainly, uh, you need mobility. You need to be able to uh, place the device in an area that is not constrained. And, and when the drone comes and lands in a place, getting that precision is very difficult. So sometimes getting inductive is challenging. 
But I would say RF can really enable that. And then you're going to come to me and say, well, you're showing me RF low power. Yes, I'm showing you RF low power to start in, in, the, in the order of uh, milliwatts. Okay, mm -hmm. and if you need watts, it is possible also to use this technology, RF technology, to do a near field with mobility. So I would say, you're asking the, the wrong guy the question. I would say RF wireless power is the answer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, we have also a question from Munio Cavallo. Um, he says, what is the power level being used for transmission in your product and what is the corresponding range? Yeah, uh, the, the power level is an evolution. Okay, so if you look at communication systems, everyone is always being worried about one what conducted for a long, long, long time. When it comes to wireless power transmission, especially specifically RF power transmission, if you remember during the discussion, I mentioned that there are no limits of power in the US and there are some limits in Europe. So, so as far as, as the power is a function of basically picking up uh, the right environment. Okay. okay? So the next question from Min Liu, uh, Min Yu Liu, and he said that, well, uh, FCC has a power limit on almost all the spectrum. Why is it no power limitation for wireless power from FCC? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you noticed, I said uh, the FCC is working on a new uh, set of uh, requirements for wireless power transmission. There is no standard, regulatory standards per se for RF wireless power transmission. That's being worked on. But many years ago, when we started the company and we looked at part 18 as well as part 15, part 15 is, is set to one watt. So any system that you want to put, want to send power at part, part 15, you're going to be limited to one watt and about six dBi and 10 again. The, the advantage and what we notice is that part 18 actually does not have power limitations. And at the time, three and a half years ago, it had limitations on distance. So we found a safe way to, to apply the, the, the uh, notions that I mentioned before, SAR emissions, and so on, and the same technologies that would allow you to now extend that distance. Okay, okay. so that's pretty much what it is. And, and okay. you'll see more of this going on. It's happening already, Japan, Europe, Europe, no limitations. Yeah. Okay, so we have, we're gonna answer two more questions. This is one from an anonymous user. He says, uh, what do you think about far field communication in a way you can overcome uh, the losses due to uh, the propagation? Uh, there, there are no miracles. There are no miracles, okay? I mean, RF and, and the losses over the air, they're there. And you can ask the same question as far as communications. Today, all of you guys are using Wi-Fi. And actually one of the problems I had just now is related to my Wi-Fi link. And what I can tell you right now is that those losses are, are there, We're not, we, we can do little about that, this. But if you look at a communication system, you're looking at a system that is highly inefficient. In fact, in my opinion, it is, it has negative efficiency. Why do I say negative efficiency for wireless communications? Because it takes an amount of power to actually recover the signal, <laughs> okay? Yeah. But in wireless power, what you're doing is you actually have a positive efficiency. Yeah. And my question to you is very simple. Do you, do you want to wait for this to be highly efficient like a cable, or do you want to have a, 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 a efficient system for wireless purposes that is low cost, and it's all about convenience? Yeah. And that's why it should happen. Uh, what is the frequency band uh, for your uh, product? Sure. In the case of uh, energies, we've been pushing really hard uh, throughout the world, the 900 megahertz. Uh -huh. band, which is an ISM band. Uh, there are efforts too uh, we, we, that we have supported in the, in the areas of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Certainly 2.4 and 5 gigahertz have tremendous coexistence problems because, I mean, the Wi-Fi guys are very strong. The Bluetooth guys are very strong. At 900, certainly we, we, we have to coexist with RFID and other technologies. So 900 is what we do. Okay, well, one last question. Sure. Uh, can you tell us anything about the Chinese the regulatory process? Yes, well, Okay. definitely. Uh, it, is, it is a country that's out up there. It's a country that loves technology, but today they're very slow on, on moving in the area of RS wireless power. Uh, there's been uh, certainly a lot of interest on it. And I'm sure that as we move forward, they will, they, uh, they will basically get there. Yes. Okay, well, um, thank you very much. Yeah, we're a little bit over time, but due to the technical difficulties, we lost some of those. We'll post your videos um, on the website somewhere and then put a link. 
Thank you all so much. And now uh, we are concluding the keynote session for our very first keynote session. And I'm going to uh, introduce Professor Jason Lin and David uh, um, uh, uh, for the technical session to start. Thank you very much. Jason, uh, you can take over from here. Yeah, thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. So now let's uh, start the first uh, technical sessions. So, so in this technical session, I think I have all the speakers in place right now, um, but I'm missing on my co-chair, uh, Professor David Chen. I think he has some technical difficulty to join. Uh, um, and he joined at 10B, then I promote him to panelists, but, um, but not successful. Uh, without waiting for him, I actually I can go ahead to start the session. So what we're gonna do in the technical session is that we're gonna ask the technical paper presenters to present their paper in a summary in two minutes. So they have already uploaded their uh, two minute, uh, so-called two slide uh, presentation slide PDF summary. You can look at that, that are on FUBA already. And I'm gonna show that on my screen to ask them to present it one by one. So speakers in this section, are you ready? So we're gonna go by the order um, and then I'm gonna share my screen first. Uh, share my screen. Okay, so now you can see the, um, the summary PDF actually shown here. So we're gonna go by the TS1 first, but TS1-1 followed by TS1-2. So for speakers, uh, please get ready. So let me introduce the first speaker, uh, the first paper, first paper design reactive sh uh, shear coil for wire charger with multiple coils. The paper presented by Sang Liu Ha, um, Sang Liu, uh, you, you there? Yeah, yes, Professor. Okay. Yes. So uh, you, you are the first presenter, so you can set a, an example. So I'm using this slide to introduce to you. Uh, so, and then your uh, paper, and then the affiliation you're from the uh, uh, KAIS in Korea. So the next slide, basically is your two uh, mini summary. So go ahead. Okay. Uh... Hello everyone, uh, I'm Sang Yara from KAIS in South Korea. And my research title is Design of Reactive Sheet Coil for Wise Charger with Multiple Coils. My uh, research summary is like this slide. In this research, a reactive sheeting coil that can achieve maximum EMF canceling performance for multiple test cores is proposed. The magnetic field by reactive sheet is generated by coupling coefficient with TX coil. Since the current of the reactive sheet coil cannot be easily adjusted, the inductance and capacitance of the coil should be selected. And the sheet coil should have a small pass resistance for low power transfer efficiency reduction. The proposed reactive sheet coil is designed by the following process. The detail of the process and formulas can be found in the full presentation video. Using this process, the reactive sheet coil uh, 04QI reference, reference design MPA6 composed 3 TX coil is designed and the EMF is cancelled by up to about 80%. The proposed reactive sharing coil is target for my application and the power is 15 watt. However, using the proposed design process, you can design the shared coil for other applications such as electric vehicle. Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Now let's move on to the uh, second paper. We're gonna go through all the paper summary presentation first and then we're gonna open for uh, session Q and A with all the presenters. Okay. So next paper uh, title is a low cost open source platform for high fidelity calculation of large WPT coils. Paper will be presented by Gregory Moore, um, the and from Un the University of Washington. Okay, uh, Greg. Hi, uh, thank you very much. My name is Gregory Moore. Uh, I'm with the University of Washington, specifically the Sensor Systems Lab, where we work on wireless power transfer and low power data communication. 
Uh, our team uh, here shown in the author list uh, is uh, researchers in that lab, including undergraduates and uh, at both University of Washington and San Diego State University. Uh, the MPFCS, the Mostly Printed Field Characterization System, is a system for characterizing the magnetic fields resulting from large uh, transmitting coils. Uh, the system was built on a very inexpensive uh, uh, V1 engineering CNC platform, which allows up to uh, 0.1 millimeter accuracy and one degree accuracy in the tilt pan uh, across the entire volume, which is in this case, in our system, we built it at 600 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 600 millimeters. Uh, very expandable up to the design requirements. Uh, the, uh, for the system, there are multiple end effectors. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there are multiple end effectors, and these end effectors allow for both calibration and measurement of both the uh, the S21, if you're just measuring between two coils, or uh, perhaps more interesting, the, the actual magnetic field resulting from the TX, the transmitting coil. And the next slide, thank you. <laughs> and uh, some of the results are shown here. Uh, these are uh, the, the um, fields shown in the uh, top right quadrant, or from top and on the right hand side, are all measured by the uh, MPFCS. Uh, and it gives you a fast measurement of the uh, full field system. Of course, this is very difficult in simulation because each simulation point can take uh, much, much longer. Uh, the details are found in the paper. But essentially, it's uh, 2,600 times faster if you imagine scanning across a scanning a receive antenna across a very complex array. It be can become almost impossible to do that simulation. So uh, yeah, that's the MPFCS uh, at the University of Washington System. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Move on to the third paper. The title is Multiband uh, Parity Time Symmetry Symmetric Wireless Power Transfer System. <laughs> uh, the paper will be presented by Zhu Ye from uh, University of Illinois at Chicago. So Zhu. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Zhu Lu from University of Illinois at Chicago. Here I'm going to briefly introduce one of the latest works of our group which is the multiband parity time symmetric wireless power transfer system. We propose and experimentally demonstrate the dual band and the tri band WPD system based on parity time symmetry, which could achieve high transfer efficiency in all operating frequency bands. So what makes PT symmetric system suitable for multiband wireless power transfer? That is the eigenfrequency bifurcation near the exceptional point, which makes the standard or third order system has two or three resonant frequencies in the exact PD symmetric phase. The resonant frequencies are related to the gain loss parameter gamma and coupling strength kappa by these equations here. So once the desired operating frequencies are known, we can easily achieve the system in practical by using the design parameters calculated by these equations. Our experiment measures the reflection and the transmission of the system and demonstrates the high efficiency up to 78% for wireless power transfer, which could be even improved since theoretically the efficiency can achieve 100%. In a word, we provide a general guideline for the design process of the WPD system, whose operating frequencies could be readily engineerable and which has the potential for many industrial, scientific, and medical wireless powering applications. Thank you. Thank you. The next paper title is Optimize Rectangular Planar Coil Design for Wireless Power Transfer with Free Positioning. The paper will be presented by um, the G. G. Bergmeier from LAAS CNRS Continental AG in France. Hello, uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, so thank you very much. My name is Guilherme Bergmeier and I will be presenting this paper. Uh, so uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, so uh, the goal of our work was to use the NFC the technology as a wireless power transfer solution and also to optimize the system, the, the efficiency of the system according to its physical dimensions. 
uh, and also over an entire surface, assuring a free positioning feature to this system. And of course, the frequency of interest is the NFC frequency, which is 13.56 megahertz. Uh, the method used uh, was to uh, calculate the efficiency of the transmitter receiver system as function of the coil's dimensions, and then uh, uh, to optimize uh, the system through a genetic algorithm, which was uh, which is provided by MATLAB, and to verify the theoretical results. Uh, we used uh, simulation and experimentation. For the simulation, we used the uh, ANSYS HFSS and experimentation, we, we, we made some prototypes and made some uh, uh, measurements. For the key results, uh, we got good agreement between the experiment and the theory and simulation. For example, the, the system optimized uh, is um, uh, at least 81.7% uh, of efficiency coil to coil over an entire surface of 12 by eight centimeters. Uh, for this uh, system, the transmitter size is about 11 by seven centimeters and the receiver four by four centimeters. As the conclusion, uh, we, proposed, uh, we proposed a very versatile optimization method that can be used uh, for developing efficiency wireless power transfer system. Uh, for example, for the case of the NFC, and, and besides, as a contribution, uh, we, this paper uh, provided a representation of the electoral parameters as function of dimensions. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Let's move on to the next paper. Our next paper title is An Adjustable Coupling Method for Planar Wise Power Transfer System. The paper will be presented by uh, Jun Zhu from Fuzhou University, China. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, very well. Uh, girl, an adjustable coupling method is supposed to improve the transfer uh, of magnetic coupled regional wireless power transfer on the wireless uh, transfer distance. Uh, and the method, we can get the matching quantitation from the equivalent circuit. And uh, the matching quantitation indicates that when K23 is radius and uh, K12 needed to be radius to satisfy the matching condition. The Y is to offset the source loop and uh, transmit coils by a certain distance D to radius K12. Uh, the result, the efficiency of uh, efficiency can be increased 39.7% compared with the original coupling in measurement. This picture showing the uh, infections of the system has uh, improved significantly, and uh, the infections of the system has a, a relative smooth downward trend. And the last conclusion is an adjustable coupling measured for planned wireless power transfer uh, system is proposed. Uh, the application suitable for different uh, transmission dis uh, distance, such as uh, the electronic vehicles and uh, the max efficiency increase 39.7%. The accuracy of the proposed method can be verified in simulation and uh, measurement. These are, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, move on to the next paper. The next paper title is the Embroider Textile Coil for Wire Charging of Smart Garments. Paper we presented by Ching Wei Chen from University of Florida. Ching Wei. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Ching Wei Chen from University of Florida. Uh, so our work is to uh, explore the embroidered textile coils for wireless charging uh, of smart garments. So uh, so usually the smart garment has a gadget on that, and we must separate that uh, before washing the smart garment, which is not quite user friendly. And our goal is to explore the uh, possibility of using the textile coil. Uh, to produce the high uh, quality factor and washable, and also it's uh, integrable to the uh, clothing manufacturing process. Uh, so the method we use is to uh, we explore different kinds of uh, in, uh, conductive threads, and then we use the embroidery machine to test the conductive thread and make the pattern. And we study the electrical properties of the embroidered coil, uh, including its inductance and uh, the resistance. And uh, then we connect the 
this embedded coils to the wireless charging system and test uh, its uh, charging ability. So the electrical properties of uh, embedded coils were studied and designing, and we proposed some methods of fabrication and uh, uh, design. And the embedded coil can achieve good conductivity and is suitable for wireless charging uh, for smart garment. And uh, uh, this type of uh, fabrication is possible to be integrated into the clothing manufacturing process. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Okay, the next paper, the title is a miniature coil design for through metal wires power transfer. The paper will be presented by Juan Romero Oguello uh, from University of California, Davis. Juan. Hello, everyone. I would like to begin by welcoming all the attendees of this session. Thanks for being here. Um, I will begin uh, stating the goal of our research. Um, yes, so here uh, in the figure below, you can see that the goal of our research is to design ultra small coils for through metal wireless power transfer applications. But we have uh, very special requirements like no battery nor contact is allowed. And we can use different materials of various thicknesses and, and properties. So uh, the solution we propose is here with a very, uh, very small wireless power transfer system. Um, the results of our research are the design of ultra miniature coil of only 15 by 15 by two millimeters that can operate at two kilohertz and that can harvest almost 100 milliwatts, even through a one millimeter thick aluminum plate, as you can see on the picture. Um, the coils are made of 24 gauge copper wire and they have a ferret plate on top that enables a wireless power transfer through metal. Um, to achieve this, we use a combination of analytical analysis and electromagnetic simulation by determining the optimal wire gauge for uh, power transfer and the optimal operating frequency using HFSS simulation. And we verify these results through simulations and measurements. So uh, to conclude, we were able to harvest more than 100 milliwatts, even through a metal plate and to the best of our knowledge, our coils are the smallest that has been ever been reported for, through metal uh, power transfer. This design is valid for metal barriers of reduced thicknesses and materials less ferromagnetic than aluminum. And we are currently working on building a complete battery-less through metal communication system using this same technology. Thank you. Thank you. The next paper title is Contactless Energy Transfer an analytical calculation of the coil system's efficiencies for different topologies. Paper will be presented by David Meyer from University of Stuttgart uh, in Germany. Uh, David? Thank you. My paper is about the coil system efficiency and the motivation on the next slide was to calculate the efficiency for the different system topology, which you can see in the top left picture. The goal of the paper is that we have a comparison of all these four energy calculation for varying load resistance so that we can compare all of these four topologies. Our method was to start with a lossy coil system. There is a resistance in series to the inductor, which is described by the quality factor of the coil. And the quality factor can be measured with an impedance analyzer and all the losses are measured with the quality factor. For the calculation, we start with a two-part network analysis and with the two-part network analysis, it's possible to describe the efficiency for each topology. And when we derivate the efficiency, we can get the point of maximum efficiency depending on the load resistance. And we, can, we get the load resistance, which has the maximum efficiency. So the key results is that there is a difference in all of these four topologies, which is now described analytically and we have verified the analytical calculation with a simulation. In a second step, we also noticed that the position of the maximum efficiency can be shifted to the left or to the right of the design resistance, the characteristic resistance. And um, with this knowledge, we can now we can now operate the system next to the point of the maximum efficiency. And this allows us to have an improved system design. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so our last paper uh, title is Difference in Geometrically Optimized Wise Power Transmission System with SS and SP Compensations. The paper is presented by uh, Rafael uh, Obakilo from National Research University of Electronic Technology, MIET, in Russia. Okay, so Rafael. Uh, yes, good day. Well, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Um, well, uh, thank you for the tradition. Uh, can you next slide, please? Uh, well, these, um, these systems uh, are actively used in many areas. Uh, coil displacement is a feature of these systems. One effective way to compensate for displacement is to optimize the coil geometry. Uh, earlier, an algorithm for geometric optimization was developed. Potentially, when you change the type of compensation, the dependence of the output power and the coupling coefficient changes. It is expected that it will be it will affect uh, the results of optimization using the algorithm. And therefore, the purpose of this work was to study the geometry of coils obtained using the algorithm for different compensation circles. Uh, here you can see the geometry of the coils obtained as a result of the optimization procedure, and um, the pair of coils turn out to be almost identical in size for both cases. And the only difference was in the number of joints in the transmitting coil. Um, to compare the results of the system with optimized coil, numerical simulation work carried out. The, the optimized system provides the required power, one output power, one watt, with 10% power drop. And dependency plots for the system are almost the same, even the critical coupling point is in the same spot. Now, to assess the visibility of the optimized coils, we model the SSMSP compensated system, but using coils optimized for the opposite compensation scene. For both cases, the output power is below the required value, and with an increase in lateral displacement, the value of the output power increases for the system from case one and decreases for the system from case two. That means that the first system plays in over coupling region and the second in the under coupling region. It means that the simple joint optimization procedure is not enough. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, and thank you very much for all the uh, presenter of the technical papers, doing a great job on uh, controlling the timing. Um, just want to remind the audience, the, uh, these are the uh, condensed uh, two minute uh, summary of each paper, uh, but the full presentation videos, the speakers already uploaded on the Huba virtual platform. You can click the link to find them. Um, or quickest way actually go to video gallery to find them. Um, so now we gonna have a, a live Q and A session, following their summary presentation to refresh your memory what the papers are about. So um, there are questions and answers um, being asked already on the virtual platform. Um, we can go through them or we can look at them, and then if speaker hasn't answered those questions, we can bring up here. Uh, but here, you can also type in your questions uh, live here on a Q by clicking the Q&A um, on the Zoom, and then uh, I'll be able to see your question here. Then I'm going to start with the, uh, the live Q&A being entered here. Okay, so the first question. Uh, okay, first question from anonymous attendee. I'm just curious to know some specific application uses for smart garments. So I guess this question for Ching Wei Chen, uh, paper number six in Bright Coil, Textile Coil. So Ching Wei, you want to answer this question? Uh, yes. Uh, so the uh, some applications are like uh, we we put the uh, motion sensor, we put the sensors on the smart garment. And for example, like motion sensors, which can monitor your motion and to uh, probably avoid some possible uh, work, work uh, injuries. And so we're looking for a way to uh, wireless charging. Okay, thank you. Um, the, then the next question asked by uh, Professor Doya Paparich. Uh, this question is for Ching Wei, for you again. Question for your paper. What is the motivation for choice of the powering frequency? That's the first question. The second question is uh, what limits the efficiency in the drawer powering? 
how does the efficiency change when more garments are charged simultaneously? So, uh, Qingwei. Okay. Uh, so the the frequency the the frequencies of first is the ICNRP regulation. So, uh, we try to keep it uh away from like uh, some as does if uh, frequency. So like f four hundred kilohertz is like a compromise between the quality factor and the regulation. And uh, the limit of efficiency, uh, well, uh, because the relay coil will run a lot of current in that. So uh, most of the power is actually dissipated in the relay coil. So uh, one of the way to improve that is to enhance the quality factor of the relay coil. And uh, for the number of, uh, we. We try. Uh, we test it with uh, multiple uh, devices, and uh, uh, as you increase the number of devices in the drawer, uh, the efficiency is actually increased until uh, a level that uh, the current in the relay coil is not enough to power the uh, receiver device. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now the next question, I see that the, it's the target for the uh, intended for the first paper, and the speaker already typed the answer here. But I still would like to read the questions. Uh, the question is a uh, very interesting presentation. EMF shielding performance depends on the point. Consider the configuration of the receiver coil's position. How and where was the EMF shielding calculated? Um, so, Sang Liu, we want to uh, the, the read your answers. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for your thank you for a good question. Uh, although the uh, not shown in the summary paper. Uh, looking at the proof paper, the magnitude of the uh, magnitude of the magnetic field at the specific point was calculated by uh, magnetic equation, and the magnetic uh, magnitude of the field at the specific uh, point was confirmed. So, yeah, I. Um, okay, uh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for answering the question again. Um, the There's another question. Oh, this one's done. Okay. All right. So, uh, if you have any further question here, please feel free to type it into the QA. Uh, then I can actually go to the, I'm sharing a screen here, go to the session Q&A. Uh, for those of you not familiar with this function, that's a good, also a good opportunity for me to share with you. Um, you can see all those questions being asked on any particular talk uh, presentations. And you can also uh, ask a question um, on any paper you, you'd like to ask. So there are a few questions here. Um, so just want to, uh, go to those uh, paper that um, haven't had question yet. So uh, there are three questions being asked for TS1-2 here. Uh, a low cost open source platform for high fidelity calculation of large WPD coil. So let's look at a question here. I'm not sure whether the um, being answered or not, but, uh, but regardless, uh, let's look at a question. So the question actually from uh, Professor Naoki Shunala and um, the uh, so that's uh, say the, the, the similar internal measurement system, for example, the near field scanner, why the Marion Mary of this uh, particular uh, system is developed compared with conventional near field scanner. Okay, so uh, Greg, you, you would like to would you like to answer this one verbally? Sure, uh, so as I kind of mentioned in the uh, response there is that the the uh, the variable volume of the system uh, and the low cost and open source nature of it allows for uh, just about anyone to be doing these kinds of uh, field measurements at a very uh, in a very accessible manner, uh, which we think compares well with other systems out in the market or available through research platforms today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that the. Uh... Uh, this another question being asked by Professor Shinohara, the uh, characteristic of the near field WPC system, for example, the resonant frequency and core impedance change 
by uh, changing the position of receiver coil. So in your system, it's not easy to measure the working WPTs with the receiver coil with the system. Uh, and ask you your opinion about that. Yeah, it's a very valid point. Uh, there's especially, uh, as, as I mentioned in the answer, there's especially one area where the simulation and the measurement will not match because we're using a view field probe. When the uh, when the probe and the when the receiver and the transmitter overlap at certain areas, there's going to be a cancellation, of course, in the actual receiver, which of course you would not see from the in a simulation or in the actual field of a transmitter. Um, as such, the the actual res the resulting magnetic field or the field description characterization of the field profile uh, is best uh, is it, it's most accurate further away from these uh, these extreme points or the uh, on these these outlying points. Um, with respect to the rest of the question, I, I think I just mentioned that there's a that the accuracy is is, is it's especially useful if you already have your um, coil set up built out. So if you know what your transmitter is and you know what your receiver is going to be, like you have very specific uh, uh, hardware in mind, then this system should be able to accurately represent the uh, field profile uh, without uh, without any concern. Great. Thank you. Uh, so you trying this uh, chair screen. I also want to remind the audience that if you want to ask a question after the session is over, um, you still have a chance. Um, this uh, virtual platform is going to stay on. Um, during the the, um, the content period, and you can ask a question, and then speakers uh, for the papers. And I, I would actually also encourage you to uh, monitor any further follow-up questions by looking at session Q and A. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to the session Q and A to look at other questions. And one, the, oh, okay. Scroll down further. Uh, let me see, no question X here. Six, sorry, a question. Okay, so there's one question X on paper number A contact list energy transfer and energy calculations uh, for different technology. Let's look at a question here. So this X by the Shankar Rajang. Okay, uh, the question not answered by the speaker yet. So this is uh, your opportunity to answer that. So how far analytical calculation and experimental calculation differ in design aspect of WPT? So this question is intended for um, the, the presenter, presenter paper number eight. I'm here. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, please go ahead. When we simulate a system, with um, LT spice or with flex, then there is no deviation between the analytical calculation and the simulation. When we measure the system live, then of course we have the losses in the power electronics, which is not mentioned in the paper. So there is a deviation and the deviation we measure is the loss in the power electronic. Mm, okay, great, thank you. So feel free to uh, type your uh, answer question here if you, if you like uh, put in the written form. Yes, it's up to you. Okay. okay, then let's go back to questions, list of questions here. Uh, I think there's a question. Um, uh, in the meantime, uh, for the audience, if you have any question, feel free to type into the, the Zoom Q&A. So uh, there's a, Questions X on T, the paper number one, design of a reactive shear coil for wire charger with multiple coil. Uh, let's look at those uh, question X over there. Um, those question, uh, okay. Uh, the question is how sensitive is the compensation capacitor CSH to the coupling K, okay, the S by Zhang Ho. So Sang Liu, you, you answer question here, but would you uh, summarize your, your answer again here for the audience? Uh, Sang Liu, could you unmute? Ah, ah yes, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the answer was, um, sorry, uh, even if- uh, Sorry, would you mind speak a little bit louder? 
Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Perfect. Thank you. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, the question was, how sensitive is the compensation capacitor? Uh, okay. Uh, even if the coupling is changed, the capacitor changed to produce produce the same shit core current is not a uh, large k. In my case, if the um, coupling change by five percent, but five percent, the capacitance should change about just one point five percent. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's get back to the look at the questions again. One, two, three question already. Look at all right. So for paper number six, looks like there are quite a few questions there. And I just want to go through them. Um, I see that uh, Qing Wei being active answering question, but it might, it might be a good idea to go through those uh, questions and answer again here. Um, the first question is by um, uh, Dr. Apostolos Jodis. Uh, the question is the, actually two questions. Did you measure the cell resonance frequency of the coils? Uh, and then uh, also second question that the, uh, the machine required a horse textile to create a coil. Um, is it removed at uh, the process? And how does the, um, the textile affect the performance of coil? And how was the, it selected? Okay, so yeah, uh, Ching Wei, you want to answer this, these questions first? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so the self-resonant frequency of the coil we made uh, were around 10 megahertz. And uh, so, yeah, and uh, regarding that uh, textile, I think it's because uh, there is a uh, diagram in my uh, presentation and it caused a confusion, but uh, yeah, there will be always a fabric under the coil and uh, the dress. And so we try different types of uh, text uh, fabric and uh, we didn't see much difference uh, regarding its electrical properties. Uh, so uh, we chose the fab fabric based on the, how easy the machine can handle that. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Okay. All right, I think that's all the question for you, Qing Wei. So back to the list. Is any other questions? Two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think we cover all on those um, Q uh, question being entered on the Huba platform. And now back to this uh, Zoom session. Um, I don't see any new session being asked. Um, I so want to ask uh, Ron again uh, for audience and you have any question you want to ask? Um, or if you prefer to, uh, to speak, uh, you can also raise your hand. So I see, okay, good. One question uh, being typed in here. A question from uh, Professor Alessandra Costanzo uh, for the same speaker. Uh, I think it means the, the, the Qing Wei, that's you, I guess. How did you choose reciprocal position and then dimension of the three receiving coils? Have you considered their mutual coupling? Hey, uh, so, the, so first we chose the position of the large coil because the large coil will be the one that is responsible for uh, charging with the hanger. So once we decide the hanger, we need to put the large coil as closest to the transmitter coil on the hanger in order to get a, a good coupling. So uh, usually when you hand the close on the hang hanger, uh, the position a little bit below the hanger would be right at the chest. So we put the large coil at the chest. And uh, in order to, uh, I mean, at the chest or uh, on the back, uh, at the similar uh, position. And uh, 
in order to minimize the overall array size, we put the two small coils just right under there. And uh, I don't think the mutual coupling will cost too much because they are basically, I mean, uh, uh, the many field, I mean, they are basically in, on the same plane and there's no, uh, the many field penetrate there is not that significant. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So I saw the message pop out. Somebody raised a hand, but I cannot identify. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, I see that somebody raised a hand. Uh, uh, Abdul Rahman. Okay, I'm going to click there to allow you to talk. Okay. All right, then, then you can talk to ask your question. Abdul? Uh, your microphone is muted. Uh, hello, Abdul, you want to ask a question? I think I saw you uh, raise a hand earlier. Okay. I think he can saw it, so. Ah. All right. Uh, maybe. So if, if you raise a hand, I, I missed that. For whatever reason, please uh, put in a chat function or Q&A. You can just quickly type, I have a question and identify yourself. I will be able to identify in the attendees um, uh, list and then uh, click to allow you to talk. Um, okay, any, any other questions? Actually, for the uh, presenter, paper presenter, feel free to ask questions um, the, uh, on other papers if you feel like. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Jason? David? Yes. Oh, yeah. David. So maybe uh, number four the uh, by uh, the uh, TS number four? Yeah. Uh-huh. Maybe I ask a question then. Yes. Sounds good. Yes. Yeah. Um, so when you uh, when they when they talk about when you talk about the uh, free positioning, what do you mean that? Do you consider the orientations? So hello. Uh, so yes. uh, it's the only the orientation, uh, the flat orientation. So uh, it's only when it's horizontal. So you you the two you uh, took. Uh, transmitter coil and receiver coil, you only consider they are in parallel on the same plane? Yes. Okay, will well, that be um, uh, in that case that we need some uh, electrical results that uh, the solution for that, so maybe the optimization could be done very fast, right? Sorry, I think uh, the beginning of your uh, question was a little... Yeah. So the optimization was done numerically, am I right? Yes. Okay. Uh, two parallel coils uh, beside each other. I think they you can derive the uh, uh, the uh, uh, you can have an analytical equation to derive the um, couplings and the optimizations. So it's not uh, you, you probably don't need the numerical methods to do that. Uh, yes, because to calculate the mutual mutual inductance, uh, it's used the Neumann's formula, so it's uh, an integral, and it, it is you uh, discretized uh, mathematically uh, within MATLAB. It's not a, a, a yes, it's not a closed formula. It's not a closed formula. I think there's could be because. Analytically, because the, uh, the the shape and the structure you have is uh, quite regular, so that's why I was wondering. So, okay. Yes, normally for oh, circular, it's uh, easier to make the cl a closed formula, but for the case which is rectangular, uh, a rectangular shape, or for example, polygonal shape, uh, mm -hmm. it starts to be more complicated. Yeah. Okay, but 
it could be done analytically. That's what I, what I see. So, yes. Yeah, thank you. What I wonder is that, yeah, what I wonder is do you also rotate around? Like, can you call your rotate around? No, for the moment, no. Uh, maybe it's going to be uh, made uh, in the future uh, for uh, with an angle, but for the moment, mm -hmm. it's only horizontal. Okay. At least okay, for this thank paper. You. All right. Thanks. Thank you for the question. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay. If you have question, you can raise your hand or type in using Q and A. Um, hi, Professor Ling. I would like to answer one of the questions I had for for my paper, uh, uh, paper seven for uh, miniature call design. Uh, the sure. question is is the following: uh, What's the limitation of our system? So there are two main limitations for the system, uh, the size and the metallic barrier. Uh, the size uh, will limit uh, the coil characteristics and, and thus will limit the power transfer uh, uh, performance of our system. And then uh, the metal barrier will uh, greatly limit uh, the coupling factor. And due to the skin effect, uh, it will hinder uh, considerably uh, the wireless power transfer uh, capabilities of our system. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Huang. Yeah, it also remind me that I, I forgot to click a refresh. Um, and then that might also happen to you on your web browser. Um, the, because this uh, virtual platform actually taking the data and input real time. So sometimes you just need to, you need to hit the refresh. It won't automatic refresh. Um, and that's why I missed that question and sorry about that. So let me scroll down to find if any new question being asked. Two, three, I think it's the same. Six, seven, yes, one question. Number eight, and a question. This one actually, I think we look at it already. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other any other questions that you know, the audience want to ask? All right, if no further question, actually, I think uh, we can conclude this uh, session uh, a little bit ahead of schedule. I know it's been a two, two hours, uh, nearly two hours and very long for some of you, especially if you participate from a uh, different time zone, could be already past the midnight already. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention, your attendance of this session. Um, again, that's a, if you have any other follow-up question and you still need time to digest the, the paper, the presentation material, feel free to do so. And you can uh, type in your question and there's a session Q and A. And, and I ask the uh, speakers, uh, please also monitor if you have any new question being asked. Uh, we hope this uh, virtual uh, conference platform will provide a very interactive, uh, uh, the, the venue for you to interact and not just in uh, one shot that the only the, the technical session like this, because we have a challenge of the people joining from different time zones and we had to compress the session uh, and, and like this, a dense, um, um, a very dense schedule. Okay? And that's, that's why we're doing this two minute summary presentation in a live session. But all the presentation videos already uploaded, uh, it's available for you to, to look at it. And also this virtual platform is going to stay on for one month uh, after the conference is over. Um, so that you can uh, try to look at uh, the, all the presentation materials after the conference also. Okay. And I guess during my opening session, I forgot to mention that um, even though you can look at some of the paper uploaded by the presenter speakers, but um, that's a, definitely that's a public, conference publication, the proceedings. It's already um, available for you to download. Um, you can click the link here to download the two proceedings because we have a two conferences in, in the IC Poly system. So there are two proceedings. The proceeding essentially just uh, uh, the papers gonna be 
published on ice for explorer and collected and put in the zip file and yeah, i think you need a password to actually to download these two proceedings um just a quick note here that if the download speed uh, on, on your system is extremely slow for whatever reason that could be because we're using the secure link https and then you can try to change it to http uh, without s uh, without secure uh, link then the download speed will be faster much faster in this case okay okay um if no other question and thank you very much and that's concluded this section Yes. Keynote two is uh, in two in a few hours. Yes, and two. thank you very much for a reminder. So yeah. the next session uh, will start in three hours. The keynote number two. Uh, keynote number two. We just want to uh, do a quick advertisement here. Is that we have a nine keynote speakers covering a wide variety of topic related to wise power. As you can see on their topic, and this one is interesting from historical perspective uh, to look at the 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 Tesla's work, okay. Um, so yeah, I look forward to seeing you in that session, okay. Uh, it's a start in three hours and my local time here, if I switch to the event time, it will be 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Saving Time, okay. So again, if you miss the, the, the opening sessions, uh, here the trick to help you to keep track of the, the session schedule by clicking the um, switch to local time then you will change to your local time okay all right uh enjoy the conference and then look forward to seeing you around in the next uh, few uh, live sessions okay thank you thank you okay bye 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 thank you very much jason it's a great session i was listening all the time this is wonderful okay thank you chris mm, bye bye thank you jason. bye 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 thank you everyone bye Bye.